<coughs> Job chapter 36. Elhu also proceeded and said, Suffer me a little, and I will show thee that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from afar, and will ascribe right righteousness to my Maker. For truly my word shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. Behold, God is mighty, and despiseth not any. He is mighty in wisdom and strength. <coughs> He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are <clears throat> but, <clears throat> but kings are they on the throne, yea, he doth establish them for ever, and they are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters, and be holden in cords of affliction, then he showed them their work, and their transgression that they have ex exceeded. <clears throat> He openeth also their ear to discipline, and commandeth that they returneth from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. <clears throat> but the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. He delivereth the poor in his, the poor in his affliction, and openeth their ears in oppression. Even so, he would not have removed thee out of the strait into the broad place, where there is no straightness, but that which be set on thy table should be full of fatness. But thou hast fulfilled the judgment of the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold on thee. Because there is wrath, beware, lest he take thee away from his stroke. Then a great ransom cannot deliver thee. Will he esteem thy riches? <clears throat> <clears throat> no, not gold, nor all the forces of strength. Desire not the night when people are cut off from their place. Take heed, regard not iniquity, for that for this hast thou chosen rather than affliction. Behold, God exalteth by his power, who teacheth, teacheth like him, who hath enjoyed him his way, or who can say, Thou hast wrought iniquity. Remember that thou magnify his work, which men behold. Every man may see it, man may a whole behold it afar off. Behold, God is great, and we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out, for he maketh small the drops of water. They can pour down rain according to the vapor thereof, which the clouds do drop <coughs> and distill, distill upon man abundantly. Also, can any understand the spreadings of the clouds or the noise of his tabernacle? Behold, he spreadeth his light upon it and covereth the bottom of the sea. For by them judgeth he the people. He giveth meat in abundance. With clouds he covereth the light, and commandeth it not to shine by the cloud that cometh betwixt. The noise thereof showeth concerning it, the cattle also concerning the vapor. <coughs> Job chapter 37. <clears throat> At this also my heart trembleth, and is moved out of his place. Hear at attentively the noise of his voice, and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth under the whole of heaven, and is lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he will not stay them with his voice is and he will not stay them when his that when his voice is heard. God thundereth, thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth. <clears throat> Likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. When the beasts go into the dens and remain in the, then the beasts go into the into dens and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind and cold out of the north. For the breath of God, by the breath of. <coughs> By the breath of God frost is given, and the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering he weareth he wearieth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud, and is and as it turned around about by his counsels, that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the earth upon the face of the world and the earth. He causeth it to come, whether by correction or for his hand for his land or his or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Dost thou, dost thou know how God disposed them and caused the light of his cloud to shine? Dost thou know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him 
which is perfect in knowledge, how thy garments are worn, how he quieteth the earth by the south wind, hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass. Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Shall it be told him that I speak? If a man speak, surely he shall be swallowed up. And now men see not the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind passeth and cleanseth them, and clean, clean it, cleanseth them. Fair weather cometh out of his mouth, with God his terrible majesty. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power, and in judgment, and in plenty of justice he will not afflict. Men do do therefore fear him. He respecteth not any wise that <clears throat> he respecteth not any that are wise of heart. Job chapter 38. <laughs> the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, <clears throat> Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy lions like a man. I will demand of thee and answer thou, thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Uh, whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea with doors when it, when it break forth, as it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a, sw a swaddling band for it? And break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and there, and here shall thou proud ways be stayed. <coughs> Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it may take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. But from the wicked their light is withholden, and the high arm shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea, or hast thou walked in search of the death? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare it if thou knowest it all. Where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof, that thou shouldest Take it <clears throat> to be bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the paths to the house thereof. Knowest thou it, because thou wast then born, or because the number of thy days is great? Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? <clears throat> By what way is the light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Who hath divided a quarter course for the overflowing of waters, or a way for the lighting, lightning of thunder, to cause it to rain on the earth, <coughs> where no man is, on the wilderness wherein there is no man, <coughs> to satisfy the desolate and waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth? Has the rain a father, or who hath begotten the drops of the dew? Out of whose womb came the ice, and the hoary frost of, uh, frost of heaven? Who hath gathered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canest thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canest thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canest thou guide Achur Achurus? Arcturus with his sons. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canest thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Canest thou lift up thy voice to the clouds, <coughs> that abundance of waters may cover thee? Canest thou send lightnings, that they may go and say unto thee, Where are we? Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts? <coughs> Or who hath given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds in heaven? Or who can stay the bottles of heaven? When the dust groweth into hardness, and the clods cleave fast together, wilt thou hunt the prey for the lion, or fill the appetite of the young lions? When they crouch in their dens, and abide in the covenant to lie, or abide in the co in, in covert, to lie in wait? Who provideth for the raven his food? Even his young ones cry unto God. They wander for lack of meat. <coughs> <coughs> Job chapter 39 <coughs> Knowest thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth? <coughs> or canest thou mark when the hinds do clave? Canest thou number the month that they fulfill? Or knowest thou the time when they bring forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones, they cast out their sorrows. <coughs> 
their young ones are in good liking, they grow up with corn, they go forth and return not unto them. Who hath sent who hath sent out the wild ass free, or who hath loosed the bands of the wild ass? Whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwellings. He scorneth the multitude of the city, neither hath, neither regardeth he the crying of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he, search, and he searcheth after every green thing. Will a unicorn be willing to serve thee, or abide by thy crib? Canest thou pine the unicorn with his band in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys unto thee? Wilt thou trust him, because his strength is great, or wilt thou leave thy labor to him? Wilt thou believe him when he that he will bring home thy seed and gather into thy barn? Givest thou the godly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? <clears throat> which leaveth her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear, because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. What time she lifteth up herself on high, she scorneth the horse his rider. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Canest thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible." <clears throat> He paweth in the valley, and rejoiceth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armored men. <clears throat> he mocketh at fear, and is not affrighted, neither turneth he back from the sword. The quiver rattleth against him, the glittering spear and the shield. He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage, neither believeth he that is the sound of the trumpet. He saith among the trumpets, Ha ha! And he smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Doth the hawk fly by the wisdom, and stretch her wings toward the south? Doth the eagle mount up at thy command, and make her nest on high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, in the strong place. From hence she seeketh for the prey, and her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is she. <clears throat> Moreover, uh, Job chapter 40. <coughs> Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that may reproveth, he that reproveth God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What, what shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. <clears throat> then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Curd up thy Lawrence now like a man. I will demand of thee and de declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like God, or canest thou thunder like the voice of him? Deck thyself, deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and be beauty. Cast abroad the rage of my wrath, and behold every one that is proud and abase him. Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and Trend down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar, the sinews of his stones are, are wrapped together. His bones are as, are as strong pieces of brass, his bones like the bars of iron. He is the chief in the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Surely the mountains bring him, <clears throat> bring him forth food, where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees, and the covert of the reed and fens. The shady trees cover him with their shadow, and the willows of the brooks encompass him about. Behold, he drinketh up a river, and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes, his nose pierceth, pierceth through snares. <coughs> Job, chapter 41. <laughs> Canest thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou let, lettest down? Canest thou put a hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make thy supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? <clears throat> or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canest thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him, and remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down, even at the sight of him? When none... <coughs> 
None is so fierce that dare stir him up, and then is able to stand before me. Who hath pre pre prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can dis <clears throat> discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double burdle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together. They cannot be sundered. By his knees a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and the sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go with smoke, as out of the seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth clothes, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. <clears throat> In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned to joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together, they are firm themselves, they cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raiseth him up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of the breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, near, nor the uh, <coughs> habergeon. <coughs> He esteemed iron as straw and brass as rotted wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Slingstones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of the spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. What would think the deep to be hoary? Upon earth there is not there is not his there is there is not his like who is made without fear. <coughs> He beholdeth all high things. He is king over all the children of pride. <coughs> Job chapter 42. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything that that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here, I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and will declare thou unto me. I have heard by thee, by the hearing of the ear, and now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I will abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And ashes. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for thou have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job, Job hath. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, <clears throat> lest I deal with you after your folly, and that ye have not spoken to me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliphaz the Timonite, and Bildad the Shul uh, Shulamite, and Zophar the Nam. Namathite went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he, when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren, and all his sisters, and, and all the and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and he bred with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had fourteen thousand sheep, and six thousand camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she-asses. She al he also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jamiah, the name of the second Kaziah, and the name of the third Karan Hapuk. And in all the land there were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons even four generations. So Job died, being old and full of days. Till next time. <clears throat>